Hey guys, and welcome back to Sakuroko. And today we're going to be taking a little bit of a step back from modern Harajuku and all that hustle and bustle and slowing it down at Meiji Jingu. So it's not Meiji Jinja. It is Jingu for a reason. And Jingu refers to a shrine that is connected to the imperial house. Actually, this shrine is not that old as it was established in 1920 and served as the foundation for modern Japan. The kami enshrined in this temple are actually the Meiji era emperor and empress. Emperor Meiji, the 122nd emperor of Japan, and Empress Shoken. Emperor Meiji played a big part in the globalization of Japan as Japan was just coming out of their close the country phase or sakoku by encouraging and promoting friendships with other countries, especially in the West. And Empress Shoken promoted national welfare and women's education. So it's no wonder why they have a shrine in their honor. So before you enter the shrine, you'll be greeted by a tori, which is a gate to the God's world or the spiritual world. So you'll often see people bowing before they enter and bowing when they exit. And this is actually to respect the gods and has a lot to do with Japanese culture. One of the most important things is to not walk in the center as that's where the gods walk. So you're going to enter from the left and exit through the left on your way back, but never walking in the center as that's where the gods step. The shrine is simply beautiful. In the courtyard, you'll be greeted by two trees tied together by a large rope. And this rope actually represents love or marriage between two people. One tree represented the wife and one tree represented the husband and showing that eternal love. This type of symbolism is very common in Japan. And I remember seeing this also in Issei in Mie Prefecture. Just a tip when you visit any shrine in Japan, you never want to deliberately film the inner sanctuary, so be careful where you point your camera. Aside from the main sanctuary, there are plenty of things to do at Meiji Jingu. There's a museum, a garden, sometimes there are events, and even some shopping and cafes. What we ended up doing was visiting a nearby cafe to enjoy some matcha and traditional Japanese sweets. And honestly, Matcha is not as bitter as I thought. I actually really enjoyed it. It went down very smooth and to complement it with that kuretake was really, really nice as it balances out the bitterness and sweetness, giving you a nice, refreshing dessert. Again, I think it's really cool that you get to experience traditional Japan and modern Japan in one area and get to change the pace of your day just a few steps away. So if you're going to have that afternoon tea, whether it be at Meiji Jingu at the cafe or with us at Sakurako, with your tea. We'll see you guys next time.